I'm Aaron with the Pickleball Clinic, and I'm here with Noah Rubin, former top American tennis player, junior Wimbledon champion, a Long Island native, and host of the podcast Behind the Racket, and a new member of the Pickleball World. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Excited. So, Noah, I want to get right into why I was so excited to have you on. Uh, you are a top tennis talent in the world. I've personally seen you play at the U.S. Open multiple times. And then last month, ESPN releases an article saying former junior Wimbledon champion Noah Rubin leaves tennis for pickleball. So my question is, why? <laughs> yeah, tough. And I wish I didn't turn off uh, push notifications on my phone because my friends were sending me uh, screenshots of that article on their uh, locked phone, which was kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously stories are going to come out and it's not always going to be the truth. I didn't leave tennis for pickleball. That wasn't necessarily the case. It just happened very quickly after kind of this uh, stoppage time for me. Uh, yeah. I was kind of withering out a little bit in the tennis. I was, uh, it's like, I don't want to say a long time coming, but I was having issues with the sport itself and, and the system and it was tiring and I just needed a break for my own well being And ironically was hitting during the summer with uh, Ryan Harwood co-owner with Gary V of the fives for MLP. And he's like, man, I don't know what else to tell you. I know you're going to laugh at me. And I know we spoke about pickleball, but just like really take a deeper look into this world because there's something here. And I think you can capitalize on it. I think you could be the one that does capitalize on it as a tennis player coming into the sport and, I go at a billion miles per hour. That's always what I do, you know, in my life. So when I looked into it, I mean, two days, three days after I looked into it, I was on a call with a few people and I had a trip planned to dreamland already, you know? So it was, I move at a billion miles per hour. And then I just saw so much potential and, and freedom within the sport that really excited me and was worth investing my time. I'm, I'm sure it will be. Um, you know, you mentioned leaving the tennis world because you were kind of tired out and you had a, a couple of things you weren't in love with. What, you know, if there were any specifics that you feel the tennis world wasn't necessarily offering you that you saw in the pickleball world that made you want to switch over? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's pretty simple. I use the word freedom already. I think that's kind of where it lies. It's such a young sport. Um, you know, there are a couple issues I'm seeing already with banning the spin serve that I'm getting a little worried about in the world of pickleball um, and stopping the evolution. But when we talk about, you know, tennis, it's such a traditional sport. I mean, I was playing Wimbledon and my, you know, my, when I served, my shirt came up and then they saw Calvin Klein in black on my underwear. And they're like, you can't have that. And I'm like, ah, you can't even see it through my shirt. And I had to go back to the locker room and change. So like, these are the things. And they take out a tape measure to make sure that, you know, your logo is, well, if you're playing a slam, it's four square inches. If you're playing an ATP event, it's six square inch it's all this that goes into it. So it's not just clothing, it's everything involved. And when I looked in pickleball, I was like a lot of the fun ideas I had, I just, I want to play around with it. I want to get people involved, sponsors, fans, everybody. And I think pickles a great kind of platform for it. Yeah, absolutely. Someone young, someone interested in kind of being creative, entrepreneurially minded pickleball definitely, you know, presents that opportunity. Um, you mentioned the banning of the spin serve. Do you have any thoughts on, on the, the spin serve ban? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed. You know, I think it's too young to be banning anything. Um, I haven't really spoken to obviously anybody at the top of the sport specifically about this subject um, for the reasoning. Uh, you know, I understand how close the connection is between professional and recreational, like recreational owns the game right now, obviously. So I think they don't want it going in that direction. And I'm sure a few recreational players are like, I can't defend against a spin serve. So I don't want to see it. With me, it's like, that's the evolution and you don't have to hit it. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I think there's easy ways to combat the spin serve regardless, but at the same time, you know, I think it's still too early to not be experimenting with how the sport can change and improve, whether rules, whether the way it's played. I think we just have to kind of see it take off, but I hope this doesn't lead to more kind of uh, infractions. Right. I hear you. So in terms of the, the pro tennis players that have switched over, you have, um, you know, the, the Johnson brothers, um, you have, you know, Riley to heart, a couple others, um, obviously a majority, a lot of pickleball players were tennis players, but only some that were actually pro tennis players that have 
came over and are, are at the top of the game. We've heard Sam Query talk about coming over, obviously yourself. Are there any other tennis players you've heard rumors about potentially making the switch? Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting story. You know, obviously I know the Johnson brothers. I think there's a cool narrative there with the brother twin side of things. Um, you know, a lot of, I, I think my move was because at the ranking point I was at, nobody's kind of made that move and adjustment. And I think I kind of had just enough name recognition to make it worthwhile, but not enough that I wouldn't put the effort in. And I think Sam Query is going to be an interesting one to see how much effort he's putting in, where he's taking it. You know, I've spoken a decent amount. I think there's some fun things that can be done. Um, but a lot of people ask me, like, are the floodgates open now? You know, is, is this going to be it? Is it going to be tennis taking over? And I think on the name recognition side, probably not. I, I think uh, I think on the male side specifically, I don't think, I think there's an ego involved still. I think there's a worry about what it looks like. Honestly, if a Noah Rubin already did it six months ago, and I was looking into it. I don't know if I would be so gung ho about kind of taking that leap because I wouldn't be getting the publicity and the announcements that I've seen. Um, on the on the female side, I think there are a lot of opportunities still because it's not as top heavy yet. You know, you have a few girls kind of taking the top of it. Um, but after, I think there's a real wave for a couple of tennis players. So we'll see. I think, you know, it, it would make sense for a lot of, you know, let's say doubles players around. 300 plus that have kind of been stuck there or, or, you know, 500 plus in singles and to kind of see what that would look like. But, you know, it is a grind, you know, starting off in pickleball is kind of like starting off in futures. Uh, so we'll see, but, you know, I have an announcement coming next week or so that I actually am taking a girl from tennis over. And uh, so people kind of be on the lookout for that. Yeah, let us know right after you make that announcement. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm curious kind of where you see your, you know, rise throughout the pickleball ranks going. I'm curious, first off, have you, or if you haven't, when do you plan on starting to play pro pickleball tournaments? Yeah, uh, it's going to be 2023. Uh, we're getting kind of the idea of, you know, obviously, as people know, and, you know, I've spoken about this, another kind of possible issue for the long run of pickle is how disjointed the leagues are. Um, obviously we just saw vibe, you know, the vibe league come out with their kind of combat combat to MLP. And I think that kind of proves that emerge is not in the distant future is the best, you know, storytelling I can get from that. So, yeah, I mean, looking into that, you know, we have to really be strategic about who we're lining up with at this point. So we're getting a lot of more information and kind of finalizing my place in the next few weeks, we've had a lot of talks in the past three or four weeks, um, and, and that will be finalized soon. So we're excited regardless. Um, for me, it's about practicing, pushing forward. You know, I've had a, a few out of pickleball things that I had to kind of finish up now and get that done. And then, you know, still practicing and training in New York. But, you know, come Thanksgiving time, we'll be training and getting ready for the next year. But uh, I'm excited. You know, I'm not as much as I believe in myself, I know Sam came out, said I'd be top 10, you know, very quickly. I think our singles games translate very easily. And I don't think it would take long for us to be at the top of the sport. Uh, doubles has a lot of nuances. And then, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that I have to kind of rewire in my head, but it's exciting and, and kind of fun to relearn certain things. Yeah. So if you have to take a guess, if you're comfortable sharing, where do you, what, what would you rate yourself right now as a singles player and as a doubles player? I don't even want to bring it out there. I know, you know, we can go duper, we can go world rankings of where I thought I could be. Um, I, I think people are going to have to wait and see, you know, I think a lot of, you know, and I've spoken about this, a lot of, not a lot, a few people inside the world of pickle have taken the approach of he's never going to be good, or it's going to be a rude awakening for him. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I was, I was a top tennis player. I know what rude awakenings look like. And I, I think this is going to be more of a fun journey for me. Uh, I'm super competitive, obviously. So no matter what happens, I'm going to want to be the top of the sport, but we'll see. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if singles is going to even be the pathway for me. You know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a new journey. Uh, I'm going to kind of follow my team and what they have in mind and just going to enjoy it. Absolutely. Um, do you have any male or female, you know, pickleball pros that you, you know, uh, aspire to potentially partner with? Um, you know, or even just practice with anybody in mind that you want kind of part of your journey? MOP was kind of like this 
overhaul of a lot of people that, you know, I, so I, I hit with DJ kind of, that's when I went to dreamland early on. Um, he's a super funny guy uh, and, and being a part of the fives and Simone and people that have been a part of the sport for so long. And, you know, a few of them that I've, you know, a few do better than others of the Instagram, social media, you know, channels and, you know, seeing, you know, like a, a Tyson, you know, that, that would be one that I think, you know, I've spoken to him a little bit about, possibly getting, you know, pro-am or exhibitions and having some fun with it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's the ones that have kind of make the brand for themselves. And I think that kind of, you know, shows and proves to a lot of people how important and how much freedom Pickleball gives you, but you have to use it and take it and create something with it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a lot of those players that make the strides to kind of put themselves out there and, you know, really push themselves on social media or have a team to help them do that, that are, that are getting that name recognition. So absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, tennis has evolved over hundred plus years and, you know, there's a, a whole built in system of coaches and mentors and ways for people to grow their game. I was a tennis player for years. I started a tennis academy and I've, you know, been living in that system for a long time, but with pickleball and how young it is, there's, you know, I think a, a lacking of a great deal of coaches, especially for high level players. So I'm curious, obviously, you know, you, you have the skills to come in and be a, a high level player, but, you know, there's a, a journey that you obviously need to go through in terms of learning the game and learning from the best. And have you found coaches or mentors to help you through that process? Or, or what has been your approach for finding people to help bring you up to that level? Yeah, I think, um, you know, A, is starting with people that, you know, are playing kind of in it right now. Alex Newman has helped me a lot in New York, a few of the other, you know, players that have competed at some of these PPA events. Some of them I've played with junior tennis and to see them playing pickle is very funny now. Um, but yeah, I think it's the ones that have been around, like a Simone who's been around the sport for so many years that are, you know, super kind and helpful and be like, I'm here for you. would love to kind of do a week with you and we can go through it. And I think it would be invaluable kind of to, to learn those, those ways. I mean, we're talking about a sport that hasn't been around that long and they've been kind of from the beginning. So they've seen the evolution. They've seen kind of a, what it takes to get there and b you know, what is working and what has always worked or what's only working now and what doesn't work anymore. And, you know, I think learning those kind of uh, ins and outs is super helpful and it's going to take some time. But for me, I'm a pretty good student of the sport. This is not so far removed from what I am comfortable with, you know, with a, a racket or a paddle in my hand. So I think a lot of it is just going to be playing, 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 practicing, 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 hitting the ball, seeing how the ball comes off my paddle in this way. Uh, I should probably hone down a paddle company first because I keep trying out new paddles and keep getting sent new paddles and I have to <laughs> figure out uh, which one works before uh, I kind of do anything. But uh, yeah, it's just fun to see it kind of evolve and improve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I came in and I would just, I played singles for two, three months when I started playing without even learning what double scoring, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I, that's all I knew. And then when I realized doubles is really the path for most players and that's the most common way to play, it took me a while. Uh, to, to develop. And I learned just enough to, to, you know, start off playing at maybe a three, five, four level. And then when I want to get to four or five, I have to totally change my skills and then five Oh, and then getting past five Oh. And, you know, what I tell a lot of players is that with a tennis background, it's very easy to get good, but then hard to get really good because mm -hmm. you have to actually weed out some of those tennis strokes, you know, driving every single ball or, you know, there's just a lot of nuances that, like you said, you kind of have to just learn and adapt over time. Um, so I wanted to get your perspective on, you know, singles uh, tennis obviously translates very easy to, to singles pickleball. There's a lot of big serve, big forehand, you know, drive. Doubles is a much different game. What do you think translates over from singles tennis to pickleball uh, men's or mixed or women's doubles? Um, I, I think the biggest thing, and this is how we're going to see the sport evolve. And honestly, I got a big compliment that said, oh, you're not playing like most of the tennis players that come into the sport. And I didn't want to, I wanted to kind of start it from scratch. So I, you know, I just watched so much before I really started practicing that, you know, what I was doing, I was making sure that even if it didn't look pretty or feel good, you know, I wanted to make it look like pickleball, you know, and, and then uh, I'm starting to learn that you can start weeding in more of the tennis stuff that I had and, and kind of combine them. But, you know, I think we're going to see an evolution of the sport. I think there are times that some of these top players say, Hey, you can't do that. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, there's no other way to say it, but I, you know, it comes out that maybe you just don't have the skills to do it. And we don't know what that looks like yet. We haven't had 
that many high-end tennis pros or you know other people have spoken about badminton and ping pong you know we don't know what that could look like so we don't know the shots that you can or cannot hit you know and i think from a tennis perspective they're you know definitely in singles but i think in doubles soon enough as well there are going to be angles there's going to be looks that i see because i've been around you know a high level of another sport similar that are going to kind of uh, I'll implement into pickleball as well. So in singles all the time, they're like, you can't hit the shot. And I'm like, well, I can't, you know, that's a cross court forehand that I've hit only about a hundred thousand times in my career. I'm going to try it in pickle. And the first one, yeah, I missed it, but like, I'm not too far off from connecting that. So I think it's those things that are interesting. Um, I think the easy, I, I think the tough translation is um, defense. I think that's a right. difficult rewire almost easier obviously easier in pickleball but i think the rewiring and the understanding of it is difficult and you know as a tennis player if i'm on defense which was a huge part of my game my speed uh you know i run down a ball i had to make sure it was in the right location i was either lobbying it up or i kept it low slice and i was getting back to neutral for pickle all you have to do is keep it low middle in the kitchen you dink it and you're resetting that point so to you know the actual shot is not impossible but it's a rewiring for me that it's like, well, no, I don't have to hit a great shot. I just have to make sure it land that ball, that wiffle ball lands right back to where I need it to be. So it takes some time. But once I felt it recently again, I was like, oh, that felt good. Okay, I can reset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's definitely just, yeah, again, learning the things that kind of you should take over and learn the things you have to rewire. I mean, if you if you hit a forehand out wide and I try and slice it as a, as a defensive shot, it's going you know, to put it right away. Yeah. Um, so two more questions. The first is, I guess, sort of a fun two-part question. I know you have a, a show called uh, Behind the Racket uh, where you interview tennis players and kind of hear their stories. So I wanted to give you a chance to, you know, uh, tell some of our viewers um, and listeners just kind of about that and, uh, and what you do with, with your podcast. And then also just because you're such an experienced podcaster, you had any, any one critique of, of, you know, my interview, uh, you know, anything you think could be better about what I'm doing with the Pickleball Clinic, I'd love to hear it. No, uh, behind the racket, uh, I dealt with my own anxiety and depression through tennis. It's an absolutely impossible sport. I mean, just you're on your own. You're not making that much money, even at the top of the sport. Um, and you're traveling constantly. So it, it's just, it just drained on me. Once I started dealing with these kind of, um, ailments, I, I went out and I was like, I can't be the only one, but it was not spoken about. This was early 2019, uh and then i started i just asked some of my closer tennis friends i was like do you mind if i like we just talk and i record it i don't know what i'm gonna do with it i don't know where it's gonna go but can we just start and i started this platform called behind the racket it started as interview stories just on instagram i created a website then i kind of connected a, a podcast that you know doesn't always go in the same direction as the platform but you know kind of talks about the ins and outs of tennis and yeah, within three months of the platform, you know, CBS Sunday morning kind of took it on and like became more than I ever thought it would because I really had no idea where it was going to go. But, you know, I have about, I don't know exactly how many 200 plus stories. I have probably 100 more locked up and it, it just is sharing what all these players are going through that they deal with, you know, the everyday effects of life like everybody else does. And, you know, my, my motto is everybody has a story and you just kind of have to open up and hear it. So it's, it's been a journey. It's something that I'm going to take into the pickleball world in one way or another. Uh, I have to change the picture because you behind can't the paddle. Yeah, yeah, behind the paddle, but you can't see through a paddle. So we have to figure out what that looks like in terms of a picture, but uh, we'll get creative on that side. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of my baby. I've kept it as organic as possible. And you know, had some fun projects with it and, and working on a few, few more. So it would be fun to see how it progresses into pickle. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, yeah, for you, I, no, no, you've I, honestly, I, I kid you not, you're definitely one of the better ones I've, I've done over the past year. I think uh, seem experienced and personable. So it's uh, all good. And you don't have any uh, fake backgrounds behind you with that, which I appreciate. <laughs> background, just a little banner that we put up at tournaments as a QR code, but not even fully down yet. <laughs> um, and then last question, I just want to end with this. I ask a lot of the people I talk to in the pickleball world. It's a general question. Why do you love pickleball? Um, yeah, obviously I'm new to the sport and, and tennis is, is always going to have my heart. I think pickleball there's satisfying is kind of the word that comes to mind. And as much as the noise outside of playing 
could be annoying at times. I mean, you know, it's been the noise complaints. Everybody's spoken about that. When you're in it and you feel the connection and you hear the sound, there's something extremely satisfying about that. And I can I can't really put words to it. You almost have to feel it. And once people have, and you know, I've had friends that haven't been to the gym before and I have friends that are you know professional athletes and regardless of where they lie it's always that same feeling it's the reason why so many people are picking up a paddle every day um it's just satisfying it feels good (laughs) pickleball is satisfying yes uh it'll be satisfying to see you on the court in in the pickleball world and uh looking forward to, to seeing you know your your rise throughout the pickleball uh rankings and you know we're excited to see what's to come thanks so much No, thank you for having me. This was fun.